we looked at a group of remedies last time we met that contained mucilage, didn't we? Mucilage we saw as being that slimy, undigested component of some herbs, which gives to some remedies their hydrophilic characteristics. So when we talk about demulcent remedies, these are remedies that contain a high mucilage content, serving to physically coat mucosal surfaces. This provides a barrier against damage and irritation, enabling inflamed membranes to heal and repair. Hence, demulcents are remedies that possess a notable soothing effect on inflamed, irritated, or damaged mucosal surfaces. And you can see, therefore, the broad range of indications for the actions of demulcents. To me, it's a great pity that some of these categories are not taught even in mainstream medical uh, courses because there's no reason why a lot of this information can't be incorporated into major medical protocols for managing, say, diseases of the gastrointestinal tract. I spoke ages ago down here in Melbourne to a, in Melbourne to a group of pharmacists and we're talking about the trepain alkaloids only to find the majority of the younger pharmacists didn't know what a trepain alkaloid was. I talk about demulcents, and I find that medically there's no understanding or very little understanding of this potential associated with many plant-based remedies to have a major contribution to soothing many of the diseases that afflict the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract. Even if a general practitioner were to prescribe some slippery on capsules or some marshmallow capsules to a patient on SOMAC or whatever else he's doing, there would be no conflict and the, the wall of the gut would benefit by the potentially protective, healing, provocative effect that nucleus has on the gut wall. I can't think of the number of patients over my 30 years and listeners to my programs and listeners to my lectures they're just beginning to use a simple mucilaginous supplement, maybe something like slippery or marshmallow, has not benefited and passed on to me the benefit associated with that on the gut wall. Very good question. Do they affect the absorption of medication? Okay. The question has been asked, do they affect the absorption of medication? There's been a lot written about this. In my opinion, no more or no less than many foods in our diet which also contain mucilaginous constituents. The level in which they're ingested is very regulated. They're not taken in an uncontrolled form. And as I said to Gerald this morning on the topic of interaction, I have practiced for nearly 35 years. And my opinion is that the likelihood of many of these things interacting with mainstream medication is very, very remote. And in my opinion, 